children born with a cleft lip or teenagers recovering from a car accident, plastic surgery may be the answer that could change their lives. Dr. John Gerardo specializes in pediatric craniofacial plastic surgery at Spectrum Health. And there are a number of different conditions that you're able to help. Why don't you tell us about some of them? Well, thank you very much for having us on. I think traditionally our flagship program has always been uh, the care of children with facial differences, mm -hmm. primarily cleft lip and palate. And that's really a lifelong intervention for those children. However, as we expand all of our services at Spectrum, plastic surgery, not necessarily something that comes to mind when everybody thinks about what your child would need. Exactly. Yeah. However, in this day and age where some folks as they hit uh, junior high school or middle school often are victims of bullying simply because of how they appear or some uh, conditions that get in the way of participating in gym class or other social activities, we can certainly offer some more traditional uh, plastic surgery interventions for those kids. You know, back to school is here pretty much and like you said, so many kids when they're entering that high school adolescent phase, they have acne, a lot of different issues that they can be bullied from and you can help in that department as well. Absolutely. And just using traditional plastic surgery techniques. The nice part about DeVos is it's a whole unified integrated approach to those uh, conditions. It's not just an outpatient procedure somewhere else. It's very much in a children's fo focused environment where both our psychosocial uh, development, our speech language pathologists, and our anesthesiologists all come together to treat the children first. Yeah, you have that team approach, which is wonderful. Is it different having a patient that is a young age than a doctor that would perform plastic surgery or correcting a face deformity on an adult? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, you're treating the whole family. Yeah. So even if it's a teenage girl with a breast asymmetry or a boy with a, a gynecomastia developments or specifically a facial difference, mm -hmm. um, uh, it encompasses the whole family's participation as well. Sure, because those parents, I mean, they're so concerned and also worried because they've, they've been through, they walked that road with their child about all the challenges that they faced already. Even when you think it's a simple procedure, it's nice to have everybody as part of the team together. If you put yeah. the family first, then taking care of what you think is a simple process then becomes that way for all, all people involved. You know, we are so lucky to have this facility here right in our own backyard, and I've actually toured the building. You say that you put family first. Tell us a little bit how you really do cater one-on-one -on -one to people in all of their different needs. It's not just everyone is there for the same procedure. Well, I can tell you a little bit about the operating room, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, it's a multi-step process. It's not just go to sleep, wake up, go home. Mm -hmm. um, the whole environment is focused on the family and the child with a play area beforehand, anesthesiologists that are also fellowship trained to take care just of kids. And although it says I'm a plastic surgeon, my extra training is more in pediatrics and uh, craniofacial surgery, so that adds on. Yeah, you talked about teenagers and young people. What is the very youngest that somebody might be able to um, have a deformity or something corrected or plastic surgery? So, so it's very dependent on um, each child in each case. Mm -hmm. And as a craniofacial surgeon, we see differences in facial development. And often children are born and they can't breathe. Yeah. So we start very early right in the NICU um, so that this child can have a normal uh, facial morphology, not have to have a tracheostomy or a breathing tube, and is able to go home and feed and eat. So we start very early. Right. Wow. And obviously parents are extremely concerned when you have such a small child and they do need to have some work. If someone at home is watching and they think that they could use your services, how would they get a hold of you? The best place is to call the office. And I'm sure all those numbers are uh, readily accessible for you. Um, and we try to get people in on a uh, urgent basis um, as well. Um, but certainly it's something to look into. It's always good to have more information. So if you think there might be a question or a problem that you'd at least like an answer to or a discussion about, then it's certainly worth your time to come in and see what we all have to offer. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen many cases over the years of different things and the way you've been able to really change the lives of young people and their families, as you mentioned. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is 8 West.